Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenbloom with a special market update here for the Theo Evening Video for the 11th of June, 2020. And it's a day, let's just look at the numbers right here. The SP futures were down about a 5% and a half. The NASDAQ is the strongest of the weakest markets, and that was only down 4.5%. The Dow futures closed almost, the Dow Jones index actually closed almost about 1,900 points lower. The futures here are 1,800 points lower, which is about 6.5%. And the main loser or weakest index of the day is the Russell. And that's down 100 points. Doesn't seem like a lot in the comparison, but in the big picture, that is 7 and a quarter percent. On the backs of the financials, just kind of going through the numbers here, financials were off 8%. Tech was off 5%. In fact, let's sort this this way. The weakest was energy. B is materials, I is industrials, technology is right there in the middle of the pack. V is healthcare, Y is discretionary, U is utilities, and P is staples. This is exactly the type of price behavior or percent behavior that you would expect from a risk off type of environment. What does that mean? The strongest sectors being mainly technology, financials, energy to an extent, they are the weakest which means money rotated quicker, faster, more dramatically out of those sectors. Everything lost money today, but the safe, protective, defensive sectors, we call them risk off sectors or protective sectors, utilities and staples mainly, were only down 4%. On the other side, the bonds, they were up about 2%. If we're talking about TLT, which bounced off of 155, talking about the 10 year note, and that's a push to the upside. I'll come back to this in a minute. And 30-year note has pushed back to the upside. Our own Don Kaufman mentioned this in the earlier video last night. And that is, something is up with the bond market. The correlations are snapping back. So remember in prior videos, I mentioned the market holding support. If the stock market broke to the upside, it would result in a downside break in the bond market. That has occurred. So we'll kind of flip those on a comparison. So there's your support in the bonds. That broke to the downside. The S&P broke to the upside. And now we have the correlation coming back in. That's what Don highlighted in last night's video. The bond market and to an extent, the VIX of volatility futures helped guide the way to what we saw in today's session. It told us that something behind the scenes was up and that meant the market had a good shot to come to the downside. We'll come to that in a moment. But again, Don highlighted the bond market move. And that's just basically saying the bond market caught a rally, very strong bull volume. I know I'm looking at TLT, but the same would be true in the bond futures. Remember, the market fell apart today, today, the 11th of June, but the bond market was already surging really from just about every day this week. And that is something to note. The other thing to look at in today's session, sure, the VIX volatility index is up roughly 50%, moving from about the 24 level, just about, to uh, 40, where it's closed and ended the session. In VIX terms, that's about 47% or 13 points, just like the bond market. This is what Don also highlighted. There was something up in the market when the equity futures, they had actually gone higher and traded up. I think the NASDAQ especially, which is the most dramatic sell of the day, the markets were up. The NASDAQ was at all time highs, one, two, three, maybe four days in a row. But at those exact same moments, the Mon market was up one, two, three days in a row. And the VIX itself, it was also up one, two, three. So I know it's easy to put a blame to the market. Why did this happen? Uh, Chair Powell, the coronavirus, list anything you'd like to list, but the big traders and the insiders and the things we watch carefully here in Theo Trade with you, those were sending glaring warning signs. And we can also talk about the weekly expected move. Remember, we take a look at the SPX weekly expected move. This is an indicator or tool available to you in the Theotrade shared members study on the website. Most of the time, 
the market will remain within the standard deviation bands of the weekly expected move. For Don's calculation, that was about 3115 in the SPX. That is where we opened in today's session. And just from a probability standpoint, these are standard deviation. Whenever we breach or go outside the weekly expected move, that can set the stage for a dramatic movement away from the expected move levels. Plenty of examples include February and also here the early March and again mid-March, also later March. These are helpful guides, but they are just probability. So as Don mentioned early in his session today, once the market hit and failed to rally or failed to push back inside, that also set the stage for what I affectionately call a trend day. And that, just on reference, is a day where the market opens up with a large downside opening gap. The advanced decline line is under negative 300. In this case, it was a really almost completely correlated. It actually got that way midday, which means every single stock in the S&P 500, every single one of them was down today. Now that is a trend day if there ever was one. But again, the factor is the next time this happens and how we can prepare and be ready. Number one, the market was just so grossly overbought and it's really skating on borrowed time. So no, there's no way to predict how dramatic or volatile a sell-off will be. We can just say the conditions are ripe, ready, and really just it, it, here to go when these things set up. So take a moment in today's homework that you're doing or over the weekend to conceptualize or to do some homework really and make notes of what happened and what preceded this session. You don't normally get high volatility moves like this, but when you do, that can be the difference in a massive loose or losing or loss on your session or a massive win. I know a lot of us are looking for the downside action to get some of our in-out spreads or vertical spreads to the put side in the money. And if you did not abandon them, today might have actually done that and rewarded you as a swing trader or a risk averse or playing the probabilities with a big win. And it's sort of a the opposite side of the coin is those who did silly things in terms of their accounts, buying a bankrupt stock, taking a bankrupt stock from 50 cents up to $6, buying that all the way up. And then the, the, the lesson learned for new traders in that runaway chaotic market is that you don't do that type of low probability outcome. Markets tend to correct, markets tend to pull back. Probability does tend to work long term, but it certainly can be skewed or pushed in an insane or dramatic direction. And those who went long above the five or really anything above two per share, their accounts are down at least in terms of that position. And that's the same thing for airline stocks. And I look at UAL for airlines, United Airlines, same kind of concept. Continental, you can look at all different things. Delta and the airline sector took a high fly, but they, no, they I won't say that word, but they came back down to, or they landed. It was a safe landing, right? It was a safe landing. Nonetheless, landing it did. But in terms of looking for this for the future, whenever the market is above a volume profile or weekly expected move or standard deviation function, something, Bollinger Band, it can be anything, markets tend to correct back in. There always is a statistical advantage to going short when a market pushes above, say a weekly expected move and the market returns back inside. That's mainly what happened on the broader picture, especially the hourly chart. We sit up here for one, two, three, four sessions and came back down. Probability is working. It may feel strange to have a day this large, but once again, for the future and for referencing positions that we were above expected we were into these uh, above the expected move or into that level into and above the volume profile which is the yellow line right here grossly overextended in terms of multiple days in a row to the upside we can see that here and i'll actually show you the nasdaq 
because the Nasdaq, if you count that little day, if you sort of squint and remove the 4th of June, one, two, three, four, five, six, or remove that, seven, eight, nine, ten, technically 10 of the last few days, or I guess uh, 10 of the last 11 sessions were up. And you may get away with that for a while, buying the all-time high. Generally, that does not work as a long-term strategy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, two days down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a couple sessions down. So it is like a rubber band. It felt like we were going to pop and go straight up, but eventually took some time, took some patience, took some duration to trade to get it in there. But the market did come back. We have returned to normalcy, if you want to call it that. Now, as Don may have mentioned, we are looking at downside targets, which includes the gravity point, and that is 2983. That's in the S&P futures. Felt like we were not going to return to gravity. All of these are Don's gravity points, and we can take a look at a drawing tool and just do Don's gravity. This is what those are. So I know, I know, I know. It felt like we were never going to get back here. It felt like we had escape velocity. All this was the alternate these short squeeze, bull, 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 all the way through. But again, professional traders, probabilities, normalcy, and just um, markets can't go straight up. All that came home in today's session, and it came home in a big way. Again, down about 6% in the indices. So much to talk about, but as we end the video... Keep in mind, you can take a look at the individual S&P 500 stocks. All you would do is do a watch list and detach the watch list. And I've just sorted them by percent change. So things that are strong or things that were a little bit odd, they've come back home. And that includes Norwegian Cruise Line. We can maybe see that real quick. Yes, Norwegian Cruise Line. Boeing, which quite the phenomenal rally all the way back to Earth. And back with the watch list. Occidental, there's United Airline, there's American Airline, Carnival Cruise Ship, Royal Caribbean, Alaska Airline, Delta Airline, and MGM Resorts. All these things were pop stocks. They popped to the upside. They played the intraday traders in a bullish paradise. And there were some good little intraday trades on the way up, but it was certainly skating or trading with borrowed time. Today, and maybe a couple sessions ago, and really, again, just going back to the original concept here, this is a move that was telegraphed in part because of a strong, bullish, professional move behind the scenes in the bond market and arguably in the VIX volatility futures and some other components that uh, we may be missing just by looking at these main components. So this was a, I don't want to call it a collapse, but it was a sell-off in the making with high probability, but certainly no guarantee of it happening. It just did happen, and we are back into gravity. And Don, I'm sure, will be talking about this with us in tomorrow's session Friday. Be sure to tune in. Be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo video for June the 11th, 2020.